Hi, it's Kai and welcome to Hardware Heaven. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Strike 7 keyboard by Mad Cats. As you can see, the keyboard is already set up in front of us now, and you may say, set up why would a keyboard need to be set up now i'm going to name this the keyboard of many forms it is the rat mouse of the keyboard world and you can change this keyboard to however way you want it to be and there are a variety of different setups that you can use but before we get into that let's quickly take a look at the box This has been rebranded and has now got Mad Cat's branding on it. With the box, you actually get a cardboard sleeve over the top of it, which goes into the keyboard, some of the key specifications and apps that you can use on the keyboard touchscreen, as well as what you get in the keyboard set, and then a little bit about how you can set it up on the back. We've then actually got the box itself, which is very, very classy designed. It's got the Strike Scorpion on the top, and then it's got some nice outlines of the keyboard itself. And you simply open this up by lifting the top off the box. Now, in the box you actually get the keyboard itself, as well as a box with all the tools that you are going to need to set this up. If we just open this up, you can still see that that's got the cyborg branding on there. They haven't actually changed this little box to show the Mad Cats logo. In this toolbox, you get a mini sort of screw tool to be able to change how the keyboard is set up. You get a key remover tool to change and replace the keys on the keyboard. You get some screws in this packet here and then different keys depending on how you prefer the resistance and feel of the arrow and WASD keys on your keyboard. They literally have thought of everything that you will need to set this up so you can literally buy this as a complete package and you won't need to purchase anything else to get this set up to how you want. There are a couple of spare cables because dependent on how you actually set up the keyboard depends on how long you need these cables to be. They are all labelled with letters so that you can see where to place them and they are all braided with black and red braiding which looks awesome. You also get a couple of little leaflets to do with other things that you can purchase. Everything is wrapped in these little plastic bags so they're protected. The most important thing that you'll actually get in this entire box is this here. And this actually shows you how to set up the keyboard in the different ways of setting it up. So depending on how you want it, it will show you how to set that up, which is great. So as you can see here, you can either have it as a full keyboard, as I've got it set up now. You can have the two main parts separated. You can have just the right hand side set up a little bit like you would a Nostromo, a Razor Nostromo. So you've got that as a little keypad. You've got all of the keys you need just in a little pad that you would have as well as a keyboard. Board. You can have just the left hand side and the main side separated or you can just have the little keyboard in the middle itself without any of the additional side features. As always you get a full manual as well. This manual is actually extremely useful. It's very well written. I actually read this manual because some things did confuse me a little bit. It goes into how to set up all of the apps on the touch screen, what each of the buttons does and how that you can configure everything as well. It really helps you to work out the drivers and how you want to set everything up. So that is a really good read if you're looking into buying this. Now let's go into the keyboard itself, some of the features and then I'll show you how you can build and rebuild the keyboard to the different styles that you want. So let's take a look at the keyboard. As you can see it is backlit. The backlighting can change on a three profile system. You can change these colours however colour you want out of the colour spectrum that is available but you can only have three that are preset and you can switch between those at any time that you like. The keys typically have the standard keyboard keys on this section here. There's nothing extra. The only thing you'll notice is the function button here with the Mad Cat symbol, which is different than any of your standard keyboards. On this side, again, you've got your normal number pads here, but you've got an additional 
five keys here which are labelled C1 to 5 and they are additional macroable buttons there that on top of the arrow keys can be used for some quick macros in games, something that you might need some quick reactions or some macroable keys that are really easy to get access to, you've got those on this side there. You've also got M1, M2, M3, M4 keys here, which can also be used as Control, Shift, Enter and Backspace. This really means that you can customise this keyboard however you like. If you decide that you just want this section with this side panel on here, you've still then got all of the keys necessary to use for Enter and Backspace and Shift, Control, etc, etc. You don't actually have to have this middle panel at all if you're wanting to set it up as a form of key pad like an Ostromo. You've got a panel here which can be used to lean your left hand on. You can macro this button here as well and this can also be a scroll wheel much like you would have on a mouse. So you can scroll forwards and backwards and have both of those set to different things. All of these retract depending on how you want the keyboard to be. You can set it up completely to your hand type, which is perfect. Some people have big hands, some people have long arms, and then you simply just slot those back in and set them to how you want, and it's great. You can also lock them in place. So if you decide that it's something that you want to save in a set position, you can lock that there. You can also set the tilt as well, so it's really perfect to how your wrists and hands want the keyboard to be. Now let's go into the keys a little bit. Now it's designed to mimic and give you the feel of a mechanical keyboard. If we go into a little bit about the sound, I'll now do a sound test. The camera is the same distance away as any other keyboard review that I have done, and we'll just quickly type as if I was typing normally in a conversation. Then I'm going to spam one button. It really isn't loud at all. Now you might say that I've got the different keys here. Now the options that you get for the key replacements for WASD and the arrow keys. You've got just plain WASD keys here and the arrow keys. Then these ones here have a little ridge and that's simply just allowing you to feel the key with the tip of your finger and you'll know where the keys are without having to look. Much like a lot of keyboards have a dot on the S or have a dot on some sort of letter so that you can easily feel your way around the keyboard. Now the ones that I've actually got attached now which have the rubber around the outside, I really like that because I can easily feel where the placement of the keys are but also, if we pull this one off, you can see on the inside here, there is a red rubber line on the top. Now that is actually rubber resistance on the keys. So you'll notice that if I press F repeatedly, D does have a little bit more resistance. And personally, I just prefer that because I play a lot of League of Legends. And if you miss press something that could be really, really vital, like a, a W, for example, it's just really important to actually have those key presses accurate and how you want them to be, rather than just being a quick press that you can't manage or look after properly. So you can just slot those back in. You can change them however you like. The one key I would say that doesn't really feel like a mechanical keyboard is the spacebar. This is so wobbly and there's literally no resistance on this at all. You can see it is just bouncing up and down in comparison to the other keys that feel like you have to push them a little bit more, which I really, really like. I love that resistance. I love the feel of mechanical keyboards. You feel like you have to work out your fingers a little bit more. This spacebar could be better. I really, really hope that they bring out some additional space bars that you could possibly put in there because I just feel that this is just too wobbly. If a space bar was macro to something really important, I'd be pressing that without even realising and just the sound of the wobble would notify me that I'd pressed it. So that's the only thing I would really say was bad about the whole mechanical keyboard feel. All of the other keys feel great. I love the fact that you've got three different options for the WASD and the arrow keys. I personally like the resistance on there so I use the ones that have got that rubber on the inside. Some people would just prefer the normal ones. All of them backlight, 
So no matter which ones you use, it's great. I love the red backlighting because it goes well with the red finish around these keys. So that's awesome. Let's go into the touch screen a little bit here. So on the side, we have got a microphone and a audio mute. So that's your speakers and your microphone. You've got volume up and down and that actually controls your computer. So it's all plugged in via USB to your computer and you can mute your mic or your audio and you can put that up and down. The buttons here, as I've shown, switch between the three backlighting settings and I'll show you the different spectrum of colours that we can look at in a second. This button here takes you back to the menu and it also will light up the touch screen because it does time out. You can set the timer, I've set it to like half an hour, so now it will glow for a really long period of time, which is great. You can set the launcher here to launch various windows for you, so it will open programs and you can set that all in the drivers. Each of these boxes will have a different icon for you and you can open different programs. You've then got media buttons your volume here and it actually shows you the volume mixer that you would see on your computer so all of the programs you've got open you can control each volume for all of the programs on your keyboard so you don't actually have to go to the mixer on your computer which is great I've not actually seen that on many keyboards at all I've seen volume buttons but not for individual programs You've then got your backlight here. I've set mine to red. If we go to a different profile, you'll see this is blue. I can switch that to orange, green, purple, pink. And then you can not only change the default colors, you can also change how much of each of the colours, red, green and blue, you want in the keyboard. So if you're really feeling a sort of turquoisey colour, as you can see now, that's absolutely fine. If you want to put less blue in there, make it more of a fluorescent green, that's also fine. And if you want to start again, you can just simply select the default colours that you see here. We've then got a clock. You can change it from the standard clock format or to digital if you wish. You have a stopwatch, which you can stop and start by pressing the clock. You've got some timers, so if you want to set certain timers for different boss spawns in certain games, you can do that. You've then got a Windows lock mode, where you can select that so that you can no longer press the Windows button and Alt-Tab accidentally out of games. We've got the settings. Here you can change how long the backlighting stays on the touchscreen. I set it for 30 minutes, as I previously said. You can change the brightness of the touchscreen. You can calibrate it and select the language. You've then got some additional macros that you can have up on the screen. You've then got a journal, which is basically a way for you to type in notes for certain games. So if you want to remember where a certain secret is or something that you need to know in a certain game, you can add these in to easily access them whilst you're in games. A really good feature for someone who only does have one screen and this touch screen will work as their second screen. And then you've got TeamSpeak. Now, I would prefer to have this as multi-voip server, but I'm guessing Mad Cats maybe have a deal with TeamSpeak. But you can see the room and the players as well, so you can see who's speaking and when they're speaking, and you can switch rooms and things like that on there as well. It would be great if you could change it to Ventrilo or Mumble, for example, but having that TeamSpeak thing is great if that's something that you will use. So we've covered all of the features of the keyboard so far. Now let's go into a little bit about how you build and dismantle this keyboard because I think that is one of the really strong key features of this is that you can have it set up in a variety of ways. So now I'm going to show you how to dismantle the keyboard and how to rebuild it into an Ostromo style keypad format which I think is the strongest second way as to how you could set up this keyboard. So let's go into that now. Okay, so let's start dismantling the keyboard. First of all, you need to remove the wires from all of the components in the keyboard. I would like to say that this is four times faster than it actually took me to do this. So you bear with the fact there is a little bit of blur on the screen. Unfortunately, my camera doesn't really like it when I zoom things up. You're then going to want to unscrew the screws in the back of the keyboard and pull out all of the sections. You simply unscrew it and pull out 
the metal bit that is attaching the top parts to the keyboard. And you do this simply for all of the parts along the keyboard. The bottom wrist rest just simply unclick. They're plastic, you might have to use a little bit of force, you just simply twist them and they will come out. We'll then continue to remove the side panels of the keyboard so that we can place it in the desired way that we want. These screws are quite small, so do be careful. You want to pile them all in one place so you don't lose them, but they are pretty small. You can see here, we simply just got the keyboard on its own. We can then attach these side panels. You're going to want to do that first, simply because of wire positioning. It just makes a lot more sense, and it's just a lot easier to put this little section along the side on first and to plug that into where you need it to go. We'll then slide in the top panel. You simply just put the metal section into the keyboard part that you want. You might have to smash it in quite hard because it is a little bit tough to begin with and then you screw those in. For the bottom wrist rest, you need to make sure that the metal parts connect and then you can slot in the plastic sections and that will just stay in place easy. These are the spare wrist parts that you would put on the other sections, but obviously you can't attach this to this section, so that's not a problem. You're then going to want to put all of the wires. You can choose from a selection of wires depending on where it's positioned, and you just plug these in the back. As I said before, they are labelled with letters, so it's really easy to know where to put those. Just find the one that fits, that's most comfortable, that looks the best, and you can plug that in. That is it. It is done. It's as simple as that. So now I've shown you how to build it, let's just recap some of the key features, which are really the selling points for this keyboard. On the main keyboard, Board, you've got interchangeable WASD and cursor keys to adapt to your gaming style. You've got the choice of the contoured or the rubber edged versions of these keys. You've got full RGB backlighting with 16 million colour variants and you can match the keyboard to your gaming rig how you want it. You've got the function strip along the side which adds four additional programmable macro buttons You've got the number pad with the five additional C keys and the three part active palm rest and two wrist rests which really help with the comfortability of the keyboard. Now for all of this the price is £250. Now this is a lot of money for a keyboard but when we look at the fact that we've got a touch screen, you've also got the backlighting, the interchangeable keys, the palm rest and you can also change it from a standard keyboard into a keypad like an Ostromo, you're definitely getting more product for your money. If you are the kind of person who at some games would like a full keyboard with tons of macros, something like an MMO, but then you play something like a FPS or a mobile style game where a keypad would be certainly better for you, you don't have to reach across the whole keyboard to get to the macros that you want. You can change this and it's so easy to build and dismantle that you could literally change it in between games. I personally feel that it is worth every bit of money. The only thing I would suggest is that in future they maybe make a version 2 and that you can have some additional spacebar keys, much like you've replaced the WASD and the cursor keys, having an additional spacebar key with maybe some rubber resistance on there as well would be great. Maybe even they could sell that as a separate product for like a couple of pounds, that'd be really great. All it really is is a piece of plastic and to have that rubber inside that these keys have would make it so much better and would make it wobble a lot less and it would just have a lot more resistance. This keyboard has everything any gamer would want on it. There's a ton of additional macroable keys, you've got the touch screen, you've got media keys, you've got the things that you would want on the touch screen as well as the customization to build it to fit your hands and your play style. This literally covers every avenue possible, you've got the tools to build it, you've got tools to change the keys, you get screws, you get different length cables, it's definitely worth the amount of money and personally if I had known about this keyboard before being able to review it, it would definitely be a keyboard that I would buy with my own money. It's replaced the Deathstalker for me completely. 
I felt with the desk stalker that the keys were a little bit too easy to press, if that's the right word. They didn't have that whole mechanical feel. They were much like laptop keys and that was my only really qualm with it. I loved the fact that the touchscreen was on here, but actually the touchscreen position being on top of the keyboard is a lot easier to see rather than looking completely over to the right. So I would definitely say its main competitor would have been the Death Stalker and I personally rate this above that. Shock horror, I know, everyone knows I love Razer products, but Mad Cats, you've done a really great job with this. I love the rebranding i love the fact that they've really taken time to think what gamers would want and i really feel that it will suit all types of gamers from casual to hardcore going into the pro scene it really mimics the mechanical feel very well without having the loud obnoxious noises as i said that only problem is the space bar but that's something that i'm sure could be looked at at a later date and mad cats could maybe take this feedback and maybe look at getting some additional ones that we could replace that with Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the review. Remember to leave your comments in the section below and see you next time. Bye.